All right, so we're going to do an example here with triple integrals. So we mentioned in the last video that you can set up a triple integral as an iterated integral, much as you can with double integrals, and that there are a number of different orders that you can consider. So in this one, we're going to we're going to set up the integral. We're not going to evaluate, but we're going to think about setting this integral up in um, well, probably not all six ways, but let's do at least three. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So here's your region. Okay. It, once again, the, the volume that you're trying to, to compute here is the volume of this tetrahedron, right? So the origin is a vertex, and then we have the edges given by the coordinate axes and these three edges here, okay? So we have the four triangular faces making up the vertex. So we have this equation here, so we're doing a little bit more general, but this equation here uh, is given the equation of the plane making up the front face of the tetrahedron. And, of course, by setting one of the variables equal to zero, we can work out the equations of these three edges, right? So if z is zero, um, then we have x over a plus y over b equals one on that side. Um, here, this is the yz plane, that's when x equals zero, so y over b plus z over c equals one, and x equals zero. This side over here is in the xz plane, that's when y equals zero, so we have x over a plus z over c equals one, and y equals zero. All right, and so if you're setting this up, well, let's just start writing things down and see what we can do. So let's say the volume is going to be, so we want to do this as an iterated integral. Okay, and let's just choose an order. Um, maybe we'll go alphabetical order first, because I don't know, that seems like a natural thing to write down. So dx, dy, dz. So if I want to do it that way, what am I going to have to do? Well, that means that I'm first integrating with respect to x. So if I'm first integrating with respect to x, that means that my region of integration has to be this one here. Think about converting to a double integral, right? Um, for every point in the, in the y, z plane, um, for every point that's kind of in this face of the tetrahedron, so you choose a point in that face and you think about moving parallel to the x-axis until you kind of hit the face of the tetrahedron and, and come out, right? And you say, so what are the range of x values while I'm inside that tetrahedron? Well, let's see, x starts at zero, and it ends when I hit the face. So how do, I, how do I figure that out? Well, I come back up to here, and I solve for x. So x would be, let's see, these are going to have to move over, and I'm going to have to multiply by a. So x would have to be um, a minus um, a over b y minus a over c set. Okay? And that gives me all the possible x values. So, you know, think of x as coming out of the board, right? We start, start on the board, we come out until we hit the face of the tetrahedron, and the point of intersection is, we figure that out by, you know, for a given y and z value, we can figure out the x value when we hit that face of the tetrahedron, right? And that gives me the upper limit on x, okay? So there's x, now what are the possible y values? Well, now we say, okay, so, Forget about the 3D picture, just look at the YZ plane. If I were to fix a particular Z value and think about where does Y begin and end, well, Y would begin on the Z axis at zero, and it would go until it hits the line. Okay, so when we hit the line, what is the value of Y? Well, it's on this line here, X equals zero y over b plus z over c equals 1. I can solve for y in terms of z. So for a given z value, y starts at 0, and it ends at b minus b over c times z, right? And then z, which for which z values are we doing that? For every z value between 0 and c, right? Okay. So let's pick, I don't know, one more. I think, I think you can probably get an idea of how this is going to look, but let's, um, 
Let's do one more order. Give myself a little bit more room there. So why don't we do, well, maybe we do Z first because somehow this, this feels a little bit more natural to do Z first because if we're doing Z first, then we're, we're kind of turning it into a, the, we're going to reduce the triple integral down to a double integral that we're doing with respect to X and Y, and that's something that we're used to, right? So we say, okay, so if I'm starting at Z, well, then that means that my region of integration is now this region here in the XY plane. And for any point in this face of the tetrahedron, so that triangle in the XY plane, where, do, where, where are my Z values? Well, I enter the tetrahedron when Z equals zero, when I hit the bottom face, and I go up and I exit the tetrahedron when I reach the front face, this, this kind of face that's at an angle. And of course, I know what my Z value is for a given X and Y. I know what my Z value is when I intersect that plane, right? Given X and Y, I solve for Z. So Z would start at zero. If I solve Z for X and Y, what am I going to get? I'm going to get C minus C over AX minus C over BY. Okay. And now I say, okay, so now what about X? Well, for a given Y value, if I fix a Y value here, and I say, where does X start? X starts at zero, X goes until it hits the line, right? And so for a given Y value, what does X have to be? Well, solve for X in this equation. We go from zero to A minus A over B Y. And then y is going to go from 0 to b. All right. And, and you could continue from there. In fact, I would say that um, you can probably guess, even without kind of going through and, and working through the details, just by kind of looking at the patterns here, I, I think with a little bit of effort, you can guess what the other four iterated integrals are going to look like. And maybe I won't um, do all four of them because you know we don't want these videos to get too long. Um, so from here, uh, if you were so inclined, um, maybe I'll, I'll kind of do the first steps in evaluating this one. So what would we do? We go 0, A minus A over B times Y. And when we do the Z integral, we're just going to get C minus C over AX minus C over B. Uh, times y, dx, dy. So then we do the x integral. So we're going to get um, c times this. So we're going to get uh, ac minus ac over b times y. Then we're going to get we're going to get. Well, the next one takes a little bit more work to simplify. C over a c over 2a, right, because half x squared, c over 2a times a minus a over b y, and we got to square that, and then oh, we got this one more term here, y times x, so we're going to have a minus c over b times y times a minus a over b times y, close that all off, integrate with respect to y. And we could go from there. Um, we're already almost at 10 minutes. I think I'm not going to go from there. Um, I'm going uh, to trust you to finish this off, see what you get. Uh, you might find that actually you get, you get a fairly nice result in the end if you work this way through uh, to the final details. It's not so bad. Um, and if you want to make sure that you've done another order correctly, well, and, you know, verify that, let's say, Fubidi's theorem is true. Um, you could choose two different orders, work it all the way through to the end, confirm that you get the same answer in both cases. Um, actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's do it. Stop the video here if you don't want to see the answer. If you want to keep watching, um, let's solve this thing. Let's finish it off. Um, why not? I feel, I feel like I should actually do one of these for you. So what, uh, what do we have... If I kind of, let's see, so we've got A times C, we've got uh, AC over B 
times y. We've got, so there's going to be an a squared in there, it cancels with that a, so there's going to be an ac, ac over 2. I've pulled out the a. So I have 1 minus 2 over by plus 1 over b squared, uh, y squared. Um, then I've got minus ac over b y, I know there's two of those, and then I've got plus ac over b squared, uh, y squared. Okay, so if I clean all this up, I've got ac, I've got minus 2ac over b y, I've got um, oh, minus a half AC from here. So let's, um, let's do that. Okay, so that's, I've taken care of that and that and that. And that and that, right? Oh, but then I also have, wait, there's one more here. AC over BY. Okay, there's actually three of them. All right? AC over B times Y. AC over B times Y, AC over B times Y. Oh, wait, wait, minus, minus, never mind. There's one that cancels. Okay, so AC over B times Y. I think I'm all right. And then I have uh, AC over B squared. AC over B squared here plus here minus um, plus one half AC over B squared Y squared. Okay, I think I've simplified that right. We're doing this on the fly, so, it's, you know, and there's a fair amount of, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of stuff to do. Let's make sure I got it right, double check that, let me know if I messed up, you can, uh, you can comment below the video, and uh, let's see. So we're gonna get uh, AC Y over two, and then minus AC over 2bY squared, the two coming because I'm, yeah, right. Um, here I'm going to get y squared over 3. There's a 1 half there. So ac over 6b squared y cubed. And I'm going from 0 to b. So I get what? I get abc over 2 minus a, b, c over 2 plus uh, b cubed over b squared, a, b, c over 6. Those cancel. There's my answer. 1 over 6, a, b, c. Um, by the way, you now have the formula for the volume of a tetrahedron, um, if that was something that was missing in your life.